The subcommittee hearing on unidentified anomalous phenomena, or UAPs, will come to order. Welcome, everyone. Without objection, the chair may declare a recess at any time. Additionally, without objection, the following members are waived onto the subcommittee for the purpose of participating in today's hearing. Mr. Burchett of Tennessee, Ms. Luna of Florida, Mr. Getz of Florida, Mr. Burleson of Missouri, Mrs. Ocasio-Cortez of New York, and Mr. Ogles of Tennessee. Without objection, so ordered. For today's subcommittee hearing, both the chair and ranking member will have 10 minutes for opening remarks. We may both be giving some of those minutes uh, to other members of our party. I'm now going to recognize myself for 10 minutes. I'm actually going to try to get out of here in about four, and then we'll give it to some of my uh, friends over here. Uh, good morning and welcome to the mostly exciting, the most exciting subcommittee in Congress this week, the Subcommittee on National Security of the Border and Foreign Affairs for discussion of unidentified anomalous phenomenon. I'd like to thank the brave military pilots and personnel such as, wit, uh, such as the witnesses on the panel today for sharing their stories on how they have engaged UAPs, which has brought attention to this matter. Curiosity and speculation from all walks of life have generated interest in studying what UAPs are and, and what threats they, they may pose. I will say that when I was younger in school, I read a book, uh, a 1966 book called Flying Saucers, Serious Business, and for a while when I was a little bit younger, I thought it was the most important issue out there. Uh, the, the lack of a transparency regarding UAPs, which was one of the uh, themes of that book, um, uh, um, uh, in any event, it's, it's led to interest in studying what UAPs are and what threats they pose. Um, the lack of transparency regarding UAPs has fueled wild speculation and debate for decades, eroding public trust in the very institutions that are meant to serve and protect them, as is evidenced by the large number of people we have here. I also want to point out in 1966, President Gerald Ford claimed to have seen a UFO, and in 1969 in Georgia, uh, Jimmy Carter claimed to have seen a UFO. So. This has led Congress to establish entities to examine UAPs. The National Defense Authorization Act of 2022 established the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or AARO, to conduct or to coordinate efforts across the Department of Defense and other federal, agen federal agencies to detect, identify, and investigate UAPs. However, AARO's budget remains classified, prohibiting meaningful dis oversight from Congress. In addition to AARO's efforts, NASA is leading an independent study on UAPs that will identify how UAP data is gathered from both civilian and government entities that can be analyzed to shed light on the topic. However, despite these offices being established, there lies a pressing demand for government transparency and accountability that cannot be overlooked. And that's been a problem that's been around for 50 years. The Biden administration handling of the Chinese spy balloon that violated U.S. airspace is one example how the government is not prepared for these. The Biden administration's description of events has shown that the government continues not to be forthright. Uh, between the Chinese balloon being shot down and two UAPs subsequently shot down following the event earlier this year, the U.S. government spent one and a half million dollars in taxpayer dollars on missiles, yet we have seen little clarity from the Biden administration. We must demand transparency from the Department of Defense, our intelligence community, and our defense industry on the UAP work. We're going to ask some questions about that today. Congress recognizes the subject of UAPs is multifaceted and requires a careful, data-driven approach. Today, we'll see clarity from these witnesses' testimonies, or we'll see clarity as to what can be done to improve reporting for military and civilians and remain committed to objective inquiry. Congress should work to ensure that knowledge is not driven by fear. Today we are not just debating the existence of UAPs, we are deliberating on the principles that define our republic, which is a commitment to transparency and accountability. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses today about ways we can improve government efficiency and openness when it comes to UAPs. I thank each of you for your presence here today and for your dedication to safeguarding the interests of the American people. I look forward to your testimony. Now I'm going to turn it over for two and a half or three minutes to uh, Representative Burchett from Tennessee. 